The 2024 draft is officially complete. We are going to give our raw reaction. Welcome back to another Titan Bros video. I am your host, Gabriel. Alongside me, my little brother, Josiah. We're ready to break down and give you our real, real reaction. And we're not going to hold back. I mean, we might a little bit. But uh, we're going to jump into this draft. We discussed already the initial reaction to uh, J.C. Latham. The only update I will make on that is I kind of thought about sliding up to a B-. And honestly, I officially will go B-, maybe even a B, because they did say officially both Rand Carthon and Brian Callahan said they will be letting him play and start off at left tackle. And I'm okay with that. So I'm, I'll give it a flat B. I'll give it a flat B now. Still would have wished we would have gotten Joe Alt, but obviously Joe Alt ended up not being available, so... Being yeah, minus. I mean, being minus is what I did, said, and I'll stick with it. Okay. Uh, you know, I think, yeah, I guess I'm glad they're switching to him to the left side, but the only problem, though, is that means we, we pick someone with the seventh of our pick, and we'll put him in a spot we don't know for sure he's going to be good at. So that's a, I see a hand. Yeah, we got somebody trying to be a part of the video. Say hi, everyone. Hi. Okay. I love you, but you can't be in the video. <laughs> All right. So. Okay. So, yeah, with that out of the way, and with J.C. Latham out of the way, we're going to go ahead and move to our second pick, which is the most controversial. Because I feel like people feel like you can't be on the fence. You have to either hate this pick or love this pick. And you're not a real Titan fan if you love it, and you're not a real Titan fan if you hate it. Like it, Basically, the, the pick of Tavondre Sweat sent Titans on Twitter, Titans on X, whatever, just in an absolute feeding frenzy, just an uproar. People hold, hold knives at Joe's throats and whatnot. <laughs> I'll, I I kind of led the way with J.C. Latham, so I'll let you go ahead and give us your Devondre Sweat thoughts. I'm going to be nice, uh, SAC+. Plus. And the only reason I give it a passing grade is because, you know, he, he's got some talent. Maybe he can work out well. Maybe he'll be a good second, uh, you know, guy to go with Jeffrey Simmons because we've been needing one for a long time. But I'm just saying defensive tackle is not our biggest issue. You know, with the second, which is all, our second round pick was almost a first round pick. You know, you can get yourself a good receiver there. You can get yourself a lot of stuff. But another nose tackle is not something we needed. It, we didn't. Uh, I didn't like it at all, the position. Another thing I thought, we, uh, we talked about this before, you could have got him way back in the draft. Because his off-field issues, which is another issue with him, you could have definitely traded back. Because Ron Carthon did say that he got calls to trade back. So we know that happened. And he said, no, that was dumb. We shouldn't have picked him up. Especially shouldn't have picked him up where we got him. It was a bad idea. Uh, I don't like it one bit. The only reason why it's a C-plus is because, you know, I've been for a while saying, Jeffrey Simmons, it would be nice if we had someone to play alongside him to help that D. It wasn't a, a must or a necessity, but it would have been nice. So maybe we got that. But I don't think I think we could have done that without wasting our second round pick on it. Sorry. I mean, I completely agree. I completely agree. Um, it, he was overdrafted. Whether he turns out to be really good for us or not, it's indisputable he was overdrafted. Yeah. It should have never been drafted at thirty-eight. If we had tr uh, calls for trade backs, we should have traded back. And uh, sorry, the kids are literally in a fist fight. Hey, stop. Okay, no more touching. Yes, I'm so sorry. They're fighting over the same toy. They have a hundred toys, and they're both fighting over the same toy. Um, can you see her in the in the camera? I do not know. Okay, good because depending on which camera I'm looking at, you can see her or you can't. But anyways, I apologize. Um, it was reach. Anyway, you want to slice and dice, or whether you think it was a good pick, bad pick, it was a reach. Um, and if he ends up being the next Vince Wim Will Will Fork Will Fork, um, no, no harm no foul but if he ends up being a nose tackle who only plays on running situations not a pass rusher comes off on third and longs or even just third and eights then it's a bad pick in my opinion um let me guess you see her let's just see the toys actually. oh okay um i apologize um this is supposed to be lifting our moods is basically what it was because in the end i'll, I'll be generous to give him a c but 
and this is my thought with the first two picks, we really could have gotten both of those picks with a trade down big time. That's the biggest thing that I'm going to take away from this draft is that our first two picks, we could have traded down and gotten both of them. We probably mm-hmm. got, could have mm-hmm. got Latham with pick 15. And we could have got him probably in the th- in sweat in the third round, to be honest. So both of those two. Even if they turn out good, I'm like, man, we could have had more picks and still had these two guys. 100%. We could have gotten an extra second-round pick with trading back and getting J.C. Latham at 11 or 12. We could have easily gotten another third-round pick if we would trade from 38 down to, like, you know, 45, 46, yeah. something mm-hmm. like that. Exactly. And we so, still could have got those players plus an extra second and an extra third round. That would have been an A-plus draft. Boom. Especially when we've gotten like A.D. Mitchell. Because A.D. Mitchell and, exactly. ended up sliding for some I'm reason. I'm actually really bummed out, just to say real quick, um, that we don't we didn't get a, a real receiver. Yeah, we got one later in the draft. But I mean like actual guy that you want to help, think that could help this team. That's a, That was a big letdown from Ron Cawthon in my opinion. But, Let me put it this way. They are really expecting turning 30-year-old Ridley and 32-year-old DeAndre Hopkins the old bodies to last – yeah. A seventeen game season because if they just miss like let's say if D Hop, you know, rolls his ankle, misses two uh two games, suddenly just like that, Traylon Burks is back starting wide receiver. Yep. And I will say this, we'll see uh what the next year's draft looks like when it comes to receivers. I don't know yet. But there was a lot of good receivers. I mean good great receivers to then good receivers in the later force and second. There was a lot and we didn't get our hands on one of them. No, no. Yeah, anyway, not great. Go, not ideal. Yeah, let's go third round. No third round pick. We got Will Levis, so there's that. Fourth round pick. This is probably rating wise my best pick of the draft. Cedric Gray, the linebacker. I think, like I was looking at pre draft rankings, some people had him the eighth best. I saw one that had him the eighth best linebacker in the draft. One had him all the way up to third best linebacker coming out of the draft. And the fact that we were able to get him at 106, solid. Um, I watched his highlights, which obviously can be misleading because. I also watched our seventh and sixth round pick, or our, actually both of our seventh round picks highlights, and they looked good when you look at them in just the highlights. But um, he's got coverage ability, which is just yeah. something we have not had at the linebacker position in a long time. Jayon Brown could kind of do it, but besides that, um, the Rashawn Evanses, the Avery Williams, even like David Long Jr., who I liked, he couldn't cover people. Al Shire couldn't cover people. Like we've not had a coverage linebacker in a really long time. He's also going to be the green green dot guy, so he's going to be the one getting the defense in position. He's going to be like the the headset wearer, I guess, right. um, for our defense, which is exactly something we needed because Kenneth Murray is not it when it comes to being the leader to get everybody lined up. Um, so I like this pick. It's my favorite pick of the day. I would probably give it an A minus, um, and that's just that's what I would give it. You can go ahead and start talking. I got to lay down the law. <laughs> so uh, with me, I like this pick as well because we made a video a couple uh, weeks ago, maybe even a month ago, and it was uh, basically us uh, saying what round we want to get what position. And I think I roughly maybe even had in the fourth round I wanted the linebacker. So we got got him in a good spot. Like you said, he's one of the you know he was a one of the good linebackers, best linebackers in the draft. Uh, he was a coverage linebacker, which is nice. He, he can move sideline to sideline really well, which I like. The only thing I did see was a flaw was that he said that he might miss few too many tackles for your liking, which is an issue for a linebacker position. But hopefully he can work on that. But you know, either way, I'm not going to knock this one too bad. I like it. I like where we picked him, so I'm going to give it a B plus. I'm not gonna. I, I don't remember the numbers, but I do remember he had a bunch of tfls i do so, know that so that's a that's well, a good thing um that's a, again like it's kind of sad but it's because it's a fourth round pick but that's the best i'm like where we got him how good he is that's probably my favorite yeah. yeah yep so good 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 there to the fifth round i'm actually happy with this pick as well i know it's a little bit of a head scratcher position wise but I'm going to say like I said a lot even though i haven't actually said it in this video because full transparency we shot the whole video already and then mm-hmm. The clips didn't save to the complete computer for one reason or another, and they just lost forever time. So we're actually redoing the video. So it's possible that we thought we said something that we didn't actually say because we said in last week's video and thought we did it this time, but our last video, it wasn't last week, it was yesterday. But basically what I'm trying to say is it's been just kind of just thoughts bundled up in my mind, and I'm just trying to throw them out. I can't remember what I've said, what I haven't, and it's just... Also, he's wrestling around with three kids. I'm wrestling around with three children because their mother is not home at the moment so uh 
but something we had said the last time we did this, and I'll say it again. I actually am okay with this pick because, in my opinion, your first, second, and third round, you want them to be day one starters. Fourth round's kind of up in the air, but fifth to seventh round picks are depth people. And I think Jarvis Brownlee Jr., cornerback, I think he is going to be excellent depth. He looks like a Legereus Sneed in training by the way he fights. Very aggressive with his hands. He loves man coverage. Clearly, we have an identity at corner now, which I like because Roger McCurry is also aggressive. So does Chido Bay Awuzie. He's also very much aggressive. So we have a type now. That's a good thing. Um, and I think he's going to be very good depth because something else I said, I don't know if I said this on our last video or if I said this just to you, just at any point. If Sneed or Awuzi misses any time, Caleb Farley or Trey Avery is going to be the person to step yeah. in. So I would feel much better with Jarvis Brownlee Jr. Stepping I mean, the thing in. is, he's a, he is a rookie, so I don't know if we want to put too much on his plate too soon. But, uh, you know, like you said, the depth of cornerbacks, because cornerbacks go down, at least for us, fast. I feel like we could go through some cornerbacks. Yeah, of course, so, we're used to Fulton, that's why. Yeah. Uh, so it's nice to have him. It, no, they also said he helps a lot in the landing game. He's very physical. He does a lot of stuff. They said he's probably going to be better in nickel than outside, which... We got Roger McCarvey for that, but it always helps. I mean, hopefully he can be well on the outside. But the thing is that, you know, he's very physical, but they did say he's uh, prone to do penalties and maybe doing too much holding and stuff. So hopefully we can coach that out of him. But like mm. you said, for where we got him, I don't hate this pick. I mean, yeah, our uh, defensive coordinator being a former defensive backs coach could also help as well. Um, I'm giving that one a B plus, A minus, B plus, somewhere in that range. B, I'll say B. Okay. Sixth round. This is one that I'm just going to give a D plus to. Jaquan Jackson, wide receiver. Sixth round, 182 overall. A lot of folk had him going just undrafted. Never even broke 500 yards in his career. Um, yeah, had like, sad. Yeah, he had like six muffed punts. Like he could return punts and things like that. So that's some value you could get. But he dropped, or muffed six in college. So to me, this is just basically another Kyle Phillips. Yeah, Basically, I, I feel like with our sixth overall pick, all we did was bring in competition for Kyle Phillips. But here's the thing with Kyle Phillips. His play was never a problem with me. It's just his health. And so um, the problem with this, didn't Jackson get hurt a lot in college, I want to say? So he's really small. He, mm -hmm. he, he Yeah, he gets hurt a lot. So that's what I heard. I don't love it. You know, I'm like, this. we got to stop getting – we got a seventh round last year. We got to – a sixth round this year, we need to get ourselves some actual talent in this receiving room. You know, like you said, we got a pretty good one and two right now. Yeah. But they, they are old, but if they go down, we got, you know, nothing, You really, in my opinion. We got to get some, got to get serious about this. And uh, Ron Carlson hasn't done too well with uh, that. I mean, yes, we got Ridley, but I mean, some nice young talent because Ridley's not young. So, you know, we need to do that. But for whatever reason, the two drafts he hasn't, not, I don't love it. I'm going to say at best it's a, Honestly, a B plus. Uh, nope, B plus. I could do C minus, but because it's hard to say fail with a position, you know, draft pick that's this high. But at the same time, um, I'm not. I mean, there's got to be a better receiver than that, in my opinion. So it's your official grade. D plus. D plus. I thought you said B plus. So uh, D. <laughs> yeah, D plus will have to go as well. There's not just that, be but some there's... receiver that better than that, in my opinion. Malik Washington. He's somebody that people usually go in like fourth round somehow slid all the way to the sixth and he was still on the board and we picked uh jaquan yeah. jackson and says i just i don't know i don't like that one all right now we got two seventh round picks 242 and 252 the first one being james williams um technically played safety but i think ran had said he sees him as a linebacker he was six foot four yeah he was six foot four as a safety plays very aggressive i liked what i saw for because seventh round sixth round you're looking for traits you're looking for strength, power, speed, something like that that you can coach, hopefully try to mo uh, mold into something, coach into something. Obviously, it, he's just going to be special teamers. That's what he's going to be providing yeah. in his first year. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. I think it was fine because not only – like we need a safety, which Rand Carthon did say. Now the draft is over. He's going to start looking to add to the safety room. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good. Obviously, Justin Simmons is who we're hoping for. Marcus May is okay. Um, Diggs, the safety from the Seahawks, I got cut. He'd be a good one as well. But 
we do need depth, so this will be good depth. Someone who's kind of got linebacker, safety, nickel type. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Skills. Yeah, but he can play a lot of different positions. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's versatile. Versatile. There you go. I cannot think of the word versatile. So he's versatile. So that's what you're looking for, traits and versatility in a, a pick that late. Yeah, I would say, you know, I was reading about him. He was saying that his coverage skills is not always there, that he could get lost in coverage, which is, you know, an issue for your safety. But like you said, I hope that he's a good tackler and he, he's a good in box safety. But I do see him making a move to linebacker because he's a big dude. Um, so we'll see how that works out. But like you said, for now, he's just going to be a, uh, a, a special team player. Will he develop as a good linebacker or develop as a good safety remains to be seen. But uh, I'm just going to give it a C. You know, honestly, it's just – it's hard to do much in a sixth and seventh rounds to do much more than that, good or bad, unless you really get yourself a steal or you do something like you did in the sixth round and really just want to even get him. Yeah. But anyway, so I'm, I'm just going to give him a C. Did yeah. you ever grade him? B minus, B minus what I'll say. Um, the last one we have is Jalen Harrell. I don't know if it's Harrell or Harrell. I also don't even know. Um. He was a sack leader for Michigan, so there is that. <laughs> you know, the team that just won it all. Um, I think he only had like six and a half sacks, though, which is insane if he's their sack leader. Yeah, six and a half sacks with two forced fumbles. Um, again, he's somebody who looks like he's got a high motor. He plays hard, plays fast, plays aggressive, and obviously he's part of a, a good defensive unit for college. Yeah. So I understand the pick. I don't know how I feel about the fact that we wait till the sixth and seventh round to address wide receiver and edge. Yeah, but that's a, both needs. Yeah, they're both uh, needs. Both. both it, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, because both of those, I would rather get that in the second round than uh, a D ta- the defensive tackle. But yeah, I agree. Um, seventh round is where you want a defensive tackle. But anyways, um, I'll give that one a B minus as well. I think the position makes sense. The big school he went to, so he's not some guy who played all right in a no-name little bitty school. You know, he's actually a big school, big program. So I'll give it a B minus. Do I expect him to uh, beat Arden Key out on the depth chart? No, I don't even expect him to beat Rashad Weaver. But you never know. There's been bigger surprises. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll give it a a C. Why not? I'm going to say six and a half ain't great. Now, Grant is a big school, so he's going against, you know, probably better offensive lines in college. But um, I would like to see someone with a little more than six and a half, to be honest. But, again, it is what it is. It's a seventh round. Uh, you know, he was on a championship team. Maybe some of that can rub off on him. He was on uh, a, a pretty good defense. So, hopefully, you know, all that could help and carry him into the actual professional NFL. But, uh yeah, you know, like you said, if a, if a seventh round pick doesn't work out, it's not like it's the end of the world. But especially him, yeah. he's, just, he's just a couple picks away from not being in the draft. To be honest, so yes, we'll see. indeed, we'll see. All right, that that was the draft. My biggest takeaway and my conclusion, I guess, would be this. And I alluded to it earlier. My biggest issue is I really feel like he could have traded back a good bit for J.C. Latham and a lot for sweat Mm -hmm. if we would have done that and even picked the exact same players exact same players we literally could have had an extra second an extra third and maybe even like an extra fifth or sixth with the sweat pick because we could have traded down way low i agree Uh, yeah and it's something i don't want ran to do because it really looked to me like he had guys in his head he's like this is who will draft and that being jc latham and sweat and him just be like these are the guys i will draft i won't listen to offer i'll listen to offers but give them no actual consideration they're my guy i'm gonna get them that's how you reach that's how you miss on picks hopefully this is not a um pattern hopefully this is just something i would say i like this free agency so far i mean great we have to see how they work out in the season but i have not loved his draft boards i would say that i have not loved his drafts um, but I, I will say my inclusion with me, um, the one thing that does know me a little bit, and I'll, this was a guy writing about the Titans, and you could say he has no idea what he's talking about. So, you know, there's that. But he was talking about, it looks like even without Michael Vrabel, the Titans are staying with the same motto, you know, with getting Latham to how big he is and sweat. Like, they want to ground and pound with the offensive line, and they want to play good, tough, physical defense. I'm like, but I want to change our philosophy. Now, this guy could have no idea what he's talking about, yeah. but when he puts it that way, it does look like we're trying to get big, physical. And I'm like, 
that I wanted to get away from that. And I was hoping that this would be our chance to do that. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. We wanted speed and finesse. Now, I guess technically offense, we could still be speed and finesse because you don't want speed and finesse on the offensive line. They're okay with being a bunch of big, strong people. But I completely agree with you. We're supposed to be getting a modern-day approach and mindset to our football team. But it, like I said, I think I texted it to you. I said Vrabel would love this draft. If yeah, you exactly. said Vrabel you said you get a big offensive lineman, then you get a huge defensive tackle, then you get a linebacker, <laughs> then you get a cornerback who's scrappy, then the wide receiver, the sixth round pick, he probably hates that. But then the seventh round pick, you get a edge rusher who's aggressive and a safety slash linebacker hybrid who's oh, yeah. aggressive. Vrabel would love this. Vrabel would be like, I ain't plus, baby. <laughs> he would love it. And so. I, I just hope. It just happened to fall that way. I really hope that we don't have a problem with Kyle Hand and uh, Carl Thon be on two different pages on how to build this team. Because um, one sad thing is, I, I do think it's safe to say Carl Thon overrules Callahan right now. Yeah, and so yeah. Carl Thon's going to build this team. If he builds this team for big and physical, but then Callahan's calling a game that's more finesse, that isn't going to go so well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. We'll be in Debbie Downs, you know. Maybe maybe this draft might turn out great, but I just feel like we just did still a same old Tennessee Titan draft right there. Yeah, I mean, I heard somebody say it on X. They said, in the end, it's gonna be sweat that makes or breaks the draft. Yeah. If J.C. Latham solid, which we predict he'll at least be solid, you know, mm-hmm. Cedric Gray will at least be solid. So if sweat hits and he's just a cog there in the middle of your defense, draft actually doesn't look that bad. If he's the miss that some people think he will be, then, that looks bad. then suddenly that looks bad. Because basically you have two picks in the top 38, and all you have is a solid left tackle. Mm-hmm. You know, not not a good look. This is maybe harsh. My official grade, which can be changed. My mind can absolutely be changed once we see these oh, people yeah. on the field. But for now, I'm sitting at a C plus. I'm going to give it a C. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give a C because the one the picks that matters the most that I'm just not a fan of, and so uh, I'm gonna give it a C. I I could maybe do a C plus, but if you just tell me right now what my opinion is, like Latham might be a decent left tackle, and Sweat, ugh, I didn't even want him. I'm like, well, that's bad. If you have two picks, I'm like, not neither of them. I'm like, I'm a fan of, and maybe yeah. they both will shock me. But for now, like I said, this is subject to change. I'm just gonna give it a C. I I, I won't give it a failing grade, but See, I just, but because you know what, I feel just, blah. I don't, you know, I mean, there's a, a little bit of a letdown. So that's just how I feel. That's how I think this draft went. A little bit of a disappointment because I think you and I both agree we've had a good off season. And this draft, I was hoping it would be like that cherry on top, just kind of make us feel we're ready for the season. And it did not do that. No, it's painful to watch your team lose 11 games in a season. Yeah. But then the thing you enjoy about it is that's high draft pick. We are not going to take a player to this. It. Yeah, I, I feel like we, because again, J.C. Latham had a mid second or, or a mid first round draft, which means we yeah. could have been nine and eight and picked J.C. Latham, yeah. probably. And uh, same with Sweat, thirty eight was too rich for him. Yeah. So we could have had this exact same draft class, but still have either gone to the playoffs or just barely missed last yep. year. That's about. That's kind of how I feel about it. But, yep. but you know what? In the end, I heard one other thing. I'll say. I heard someone else say. It's very possible we filled three holes of position of need and have three day one starters with our first three picks. So if you want to be ultra positive, then yes, J.C. Latham, we need had a huge need at left tackle. He's a day one starter at left tackle. We had a need on the defensive line next to Jeffrey Simmons, Vontez, Sweat. Is it Vontez? Why can I never? Or Tavondre. I don't know why I can never remember his first name. Tavondre Sweat. He's a day one starter right there in the middle because Jeff Simmons need help. Uh, needed help, and then we had a hugely admi- uh, need at middle linebacker, and Cedric Gray immediately fills that. So if now, you wanted to be a positive question. poly, there's three day stars. Do, do you think Cedric Gray's going to actually start for us? Probably. No, I didn't know that. Well, I might be wrong. I, I just didn't know. I thought some reason he's going to be buried until an injury had happened. So you think day one, week one, Cedric Gray's going to start for us? Yeah, unless they <laughs> really love Jack well, Gibbons. But Jack Gibbons kind of got benched last year towards the end of it. Okay. Right. They're just playing some random no-name people that they just kind of brought in through in the okay. last like three or four weeks. We'll see how that goes then. Uh, we Plus, no more Vrabel. Vrabel hates playing rookies. We've had this discussion yeah, yeah. before. Some Vrabel Plus, hates man, playing d- rookies. We don't know what Callahan's. Yeah, he's new, so he's a wild card. We don't know what he's his philosophy with that. Is. I doubt it though. Like Joe Burrow, day one starters. Jamar Chase, day one starter. T Higgins. Like all these people, just like immediately just went in and started as they should. 
But Vrabel, he just ugh, he does not like to see let rookies see the field. Some 1990s type coaching. But anything else you want to add before we get out of here? Um, no, except for oh, yeah, one more thing. One more thing. Draft is over, but we and you did say he was still talking about. He, we hopefully can bring in the safety, but we do have two huge needs, in my opinion, and that's safety and now I guess right tackle if Latham's going left. Because yes, as of right now, NPF is there, but to me that ship just kind of sailed in the sense that I don't expect nothing out of him. He kind of got cooked to pretty good last year, and then at the end of his rookie year he was playing bad. So I'm almost thinking, eh, he's more bad than good. That's a hole. Yeah, I think the rest of the line might be decent, but that's a hole. And I'm thinking that's just what we're going to go into the season with. So I feel like that is two holes that we didn't really fix. But we shall see. Yeah, I guess we will see. Yeah, but that's going to be one of our next videos. We're actually going to discuss what we think, what needs we still have on the team, and if or how we would like to see them fixed. So, So I guess that's all we have for this video. Thanks for joining in. There's our honest, brutal... Well, I said brutal. That's our honest little breakdown of the draft. So, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Tighten up and peace out.